Ms. Wilkinson. Thank you for allowing me to tell <clears throat> the story of my son Josh and his murder. Uh, my son's name was Joshua Wilkerson. On November 16, 2010, he was beaten, strangled, tortured until he died. He was tied up, thrown in a field, and set on fire. His killer, Hermilo Morales, was brought here illegally by his illegal parents when he was 10 years old, so he fit the dream kid description. He was sentenced to life in prison, which means he will be 30 years before he's up for parole. He'll be a 49-year-old man um, who I don't expect to be deported, and I just hope he doesn't come to live in your city. We had to hear this kid from the stand muttering about, in my country, in my country, never to finish that sentence. He went on to tell, we listened to him tell us repeatedly that his killing skills took over, that Josh had kicked his dog, his killing skills took over. His parents somehow managed to provide lessons that he acquired, so that he acquired a black belt in mixed martial arts. Joshua had never been in a fight in his life, he's a very quiet, um, old soul. He didn't speak a lot, but when he did, you listened to him. Uh, he, like I said, he'd never been in a fight in his life. So his killing skills were those martial arts that somehow his parents provided here for him. Instead of getting Joshua home that day from school, we got an autopsy report that reads in part, this body is received in a gray body bag. There's a tag on his toe that bears the name Joshua Wilkerson. He is a white male weighing 100 pounds. He is tied up with braided rope, 13 loops around his neck with a slip knot. It goes behind his back through his back belt loop. It goes to his hands and his feet behind his body. He has multiple fractures in his face and nasal cavity. His throat and his voice box are crushed. He was kicked so hard in the stomach that it sent his spleen into his spine and sliced it in two. So it was painful. The medical examiner said it was torture. This body has significant skin loss on his buttocks, his abdomen, his penis, his hands, and his face. He has one stick of gum and a tardy slip in his pocket. This was our family's 911 terrorist attack by a foreign invader, whether you want to recognize it or whether you do not. This government continues to fail or even recognize that, they, that we have an issue. Americans are dying daily at the hands of criminals that we don't even know are here. You're officially notified today there's a problem when this happens. You can't deny it any longer. You cannot stand by and ignore our families, our American families. You're elected by Americans, not any other country. You should be for Americans. If you want to sit side, uh, quietly on the sidelines, you've thrown your hat into the ring already. Your silence speaks volumes. You're either for Americans or you're not. I will not give up control uh, another one of my children so that a foreign person can have a nicer life. I'm not going to do it. You don't understand the pain. It's so deep in a soul in the place that you don't even recognize you have. There aren't words to describe the pain to someone who has not gone through it. I'm not giving up another kid. Sanctuary city policies scream to the criminal element of all of illegals in this country. There is a criminal element. It screams to them, come to our town, USA. We'll protect you from our terrible policemen. We'll protect you from these tough American laws that you, because you had a hard life, are not able to go through the same motions that an American is. They're buying into that fact. Until, it's going to take a, a, another life lost by a senator, a congressman, 
the president, even another of today's heroes, someone from Hollywood, before someone in a position moves on this, I urge you, you're in a position to do something about this for Americans. I thank you to Mr. Trump for getting a message out about the nation in two minutes that for four and a half years solidly, uh, Maria Espinoza at the Remembrance Project and countless families like my own have been trying to say for five to six years. It feels good to be heard, whether you love him or whether you don't. Uh, I felt heard. Our family is shattered. It's, it's shattered. It will never be the same. We'll manage. We'll go on. We function. We put on that happy face. Uh, my kids have changed, the surviving kids. Um, everything about us has changed. It's by the grace of God that in our broken hearts, we have a stream of memories of the loving relationship that we had with Joshua. Joshua had a very deep intense spiritual relationship, leaving us four or five scriptures in the weeks before he died. I'm okay with where Josh is at today. I don't, it's not just about missing Josh, it's about what you're doing to an entire family, not just our immediate family, his friends, the teachers, the community, our extended family. It, it's, it's incredible. I can't even explain it to you. America lost that day. You lost a good citizen that was on the brink of becoming who knows what. He had mentioned going into the Air Force like his older brother, who had to come home for two weeks and bury, he was out defending this country, Americans. And we had to bring him home for two weeks to bury his little brother when he wasn't, to be, wasn't being defended right here at home. It, it, it's absurd to me. Thank you for your time. I do wanna say too, and just a little bit of a rebuttal about um, they're not scared to come here. We're inviting them. Sanctuary City says, come on down. You can have a pass in our city. You know, you're tying policemen's hands. I'm not for mandating them to ask them where they're from, but if they pull somebody over for a reason, valid cause, and they're investigating them for something, they have a right to ask them. They have a right to ask me, stop me on the freeway. Where are you going, Miss Wilkerson? Where are you coming from? Do you have drugs? I'm gonna answer those, and in about 15 minutes, hopefully, it'll come out the wash that I'm okay to leave. Why are you creating a class of people who seem to say we can't do that? Uh, they're not afraid to come here. They're not afraid to, to traipse across the desert. I've been to the border. I've stood there with border agents and watched them come across from jet skis. Um, I, I will, I'll finish quickly. Sympathy has never trumped the law in this country, ever. Uh, you know, you sympathize with me. Can I go break a federal law? Anyone? Anyone here like to let me do that? Every one of them here threaten national security because we don't know who they are. So they are a threat, we don't know who them. They make a decision to come here. They're not scared, they're invited by sanctuary citizen, citizen, sanctuary citizen policies. They're not scared to stand in line for a handout that every American here has paid into the system for our children, if need be. You know, they mistrust police because they come from a countries that, that mistrust police. You know, they're not scared here. Um, I want you to know that our family is broken forever. We are forever broken. Thank you. Uh, I thank you for your time, and um, I don't want the sympathy. I want you to do something about it. Every one of you sitting here is in a position to do something. Just throw your hat into the ring for Americans. Quit sitting silent because it's going to help you get a vote. Throw your hat into the ring and take care of American families. Thank you. Uh, thank you.